Assalamu alaikum everyone. I know it's been a really, 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 really long time since the last time I've uploaded a video. Anyway, forget about that. Today we're going to be talking about radioactivity. As far as principles of chemistry go, few are as popular as radioactivity, but few are also as misunderstood. When most people think about radioactivity, let's face it, they think about nuclear bombs, getting close to it, melting their hand, their face off, and being harmful. And yes, radioactivity can do that, but we can also harness it to produce electricity via nuclear power plants and etc. So let's learn more about radioactivity. Now radioactivity doesn't have a lot to do with the type of chemistry we've been going through so far. The, the thing we've been learning in this series is basically the outer electron shell making all the bondings, doing all the reacting, and the nucleus basically just stays unaffected. But the interactions between the nucleons are important. And when they are changed, their numbers are changed, then a lot of that atom can change. This is called nuclear chemistry. Changing the number of protons and neutrons in an atom completely changes their characteristics. Changing the proton can literally change the element. So you can basically turn lead to gold. Warning, this, will, this would realistically speaking be extremely, extremely costly and expensive and the gold produced won't be able to pay that much. So yeah, but it is possible. And of course, we've learned about isotopes when the number of neutrons are different and each isotope is more common than the rest. These changes of the proton and of the neutron are two different types of transformation and these are called transmutation. Now as we've learned so far in this series, atoms always look for stability and just as the specific number of electrons in its outer shell makes the atom more stable, certain combinations of the protons and the neutrons make the nucleus more stable. And just as when the numbers aren't that preferable, the atom would share, exchange, or gain electrons, when the numbers aren't favorable, the nucleus would also change its numbers. Now, before we continue, let's look at the origins of how we came to know about radioactivity. So, when radioactivity was first discovered by Henry Becquerel in 1896, it was found that photographic plates would have brightly colored spots when exposed to uranium minerals. These would eventually be discovered to be of three types. Now since, well it was 1896, we didn't, weren't aware of the subatomic particles that were involved during the reaction. So we just named them after Greek letters, very typical, and identified them later. So let's go over these three. First is alpha decay, second is beta decay, and lastly gamma decay. And now for th now let's go over them one by one. The alpha particle is essentially a helium nucleus, two protons, two neutrons. Now for an example, let's look at the most famous radioactive element of all time, uranium. And the most common isotope for uranium is uranium-238. It is like 
of all the natural uranium. And it spontaneously decomposes into thorium-234. Thorium-234. And it releases an alpha particle. If you can see from what I've shown, the math checks out. And we don't write the charges, even though we know that there are ions here. Now, before we continue, we just talked about uranium decomposing into thorium. Now, how does that work? Well, let's talk about half-life. Now, I'm pretty sure you all know what half-life is. But let's break it down. Break it down. It's basically breaking something down repeatedly. So we have one of something, then it's a half, then a fourth, then an eighth, sixteenth, thirty-second, and so on and so forth. So uranium basically broke down to thorium and released the alpha, alpha particle. Now let's look at the beta particle. The beta particle is basically an electron. So to look at the beta particle, let's look at this. Now the thorium-234 turns into xenon, and since the electron is not a proton, we write it, the atomic number as negative 1. Now I know it doesn't make much sense right now, but in our next video about radioactivity, we would learn more about it as we go through nuclear equation. The next type of radioactive decay is known as gamma decay. This only emits light particles and photons. Now this type of decay happens when an atom is in an excited state and wants to get back to its ground state. This diagram shows when an atom is in an excited state and wants to get to its ground state. Now depending on how much the electron, the energy, the, now depending on how much energy the electron loses, the extra energy can be released in visible UV, X-rays, or gamma waves. Now let's look at an example. Here we have nickel 60 and it, this up, this shows that one or more electrons are excited. And as you can see, it goes back to its ground state, releasing a gamma particle. Now atoms can get to the state when they are near radioactive, radioactive reactions, or when they're bombarded with radiation or when there are products of radioactive decay. Now these the gamma decay can also happen while other nuclear reactions are going on as shown here. Now gamma radiation can actually be really harmful for your body. It can penetrate through your skin. It can mutate your genes and harm your DNA as we will look over through it a long time from now but in our biochemistry series inshallah and of course it it has more side effects like nausea etc and etc so yes that covers our video for now thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe like the video, comment, share it to anyone who might find this video interesting or who might find this video useful. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!